Go ahead. Yeah, come on. Hey, I'm Martin, and I failed the CTA board, so I feel that I can share some knowledge. Uh, so you know it's about me. I've been quite a while in the software industry, and I went from the developer to pre-sale, uh, to consultant, uh, team leader, project manager, everything. I'm kind of certification and layout freak. I do have quite a few certifications, 20 plus something, and I do have some trailhead badges. I'm also lightning champion, co-leader of Prague user group, uh, co-founder of Czech Demon Conference speaker. I'm fully aware of my limits, uh, and I still want to push them further. You probably already heard about the CTA, Certified Technical Architect exam. Uh, there are over 300 people worldwide with this certification. That's the peak of the certification as Salesforce put it. But at the same time, they say that this certification is not necessarily for everyone. Maybe the application and system architect is good enough for you, but at the same time, it's just one more certification. So maybe you want to aim for that. Uh, the application and system architect uh, certificates are mandatory uh, for this exam. At the same time, it's being said that when you have the application and system architect, you are maybe 40% toward the CTA. You still need a lot of preparation. Uh, it's a lot about knowledge. It's a lot about presentation style. It's a lot about how to handle the questions. How I did it? Four years ago, when I joined PwC, uh, we spoke about the thing. And at the time, I said I want to have the knowledge, but I don't. I'm not sure whether I want to have the title because I had what it takes, and I was really scared. In 2017, 2018, I did the application and system architect, and you know that one. That one exam, that one exam you are missing, somehow the paths feel incomplete. So about two years ago, I opened the case with Salesforce and nothing happened. Last year at Dreamforce 2019, I met Susan Ferguson who runs the CTA program at Salesforce. And we spoke how to progress further. Uh, and she told me that the CTA 601 uh, training is kind of mandatory to progress further. Also in the company, uh, the situation progressed. So I got the full package probably, which I could get to be able to pass the exam. I got the CTA 601 training. I got the CTA 602, which is basically um, just a draft of the CTA exam. And I also got the Flow Republic coaching, which was really helpful. You have the life before the exam, then you have the exam, and then you have the life after the exam. So before the exam, the first thing, as I said, the 601, which is more or less mandatory. At the same time, frankly, I didn't find it that much useful. I feel that I had most of the knowledge before uh, this training, so how the exam is structured, how to work with timing, how to go through the exam, and the most important part for me was the practice. The recommendation you get is that you definitely need to read the case study you will get multiple times. You can't read it once and, and solve it. Also, you should highlight a lot. I'm not a highlight person, uh, so it was super hard for me, but at the same time, I found my own style how to do it. And that's the most important thing. Find your style follow the style and don't change the style during the exam. You shouldn't solve uh, the case study on the first lead because something is set at the beginning and something is set at the end and it can completely change the solution. So you should really keep in your head the whole, the whole case study and solve it after you have a feeling what it's about. And the most important thing, and I would say I failed because of that, is that every paragraph is important and every paragraph is right. When you ignore some paragraph because you feel it 
doesn't matter or it's not valid, you are wrong. And it's the difference between success and fail. I would say this is exactly such example. At the beginning of the scenario, you have something like customer wants to be able to see all tickets from their previous system linked to the right account. Okay, sounds good. At the end, you have, as part of migration, you need to migrate accounts and tickets from last five years from the existing system. Sounds good, but if your solution is that you will migrate all the tickets from the old system into the new one, you are wrong. You really should migrate only five years from the old system, and you need to find a way how to visualize the tickets you did not migrate. So first lesson learned, every paragraph is important, and most likely you will have the Salesforce Connect in your system landscape. I hate watching videos, but I did an exception uh, with the CTA. I watched a lot of, lot of recordings how to do the CTA presentation. I watched how people present. I watched which solutions doesn't feel right, or maybe even they are bad, I don't know. I watched ideas how to solve the things, and I watched for things I don't cover. As I watched all those videos, I realized that platform events might be pretty handy and I decided to use them as my main integration pattern. Uh, at the same time, you should not solve every single integration with platform events because it might seem like you don't know any other way how to integrate the systems. Uh, but if you have some assumptions, if you have a reasoning, then it's definitely a good way, but you just need to say it loudly. And I also realized that I don't really cover a lot of things like risk and assumptions because I'm really bad with this. Uh, I am not able to put a slide at the beginning of presentation with all the risk I accounted for and all the assumptions I accounted for. I somehow leave it to those specific requirements and quite often forget uh, because I don't feel it's that important. And during all my mock exams, I probably never spoke about the development cycle. And during the exam or even before the exam, I found out that I'm missing this one slide. But this one slide takes like two or three minutes and you need to find a time to present the slide because otherwise you just did not present it and you, you are not getting points for this. This is some artifacts I created. Uh, I draw all my artifacts by hand. I found it quicker and you have time to upload it during the exam. Um, drawing in PowerPoint feels slower to me, uh, but it also means that I need to improve my writing skills. This is about halfway through my preparation. Uh, the first uh, artifact I, I draw, it was impossible to read and it doesn't get you bonus points. Uh, I got my ranting a bit better at the end, so it was possible to, to read it. Uh, what's important about this slide is also that most likely you will have ESB, like I would say every single scenario uh, I did had ESB in place. Uh, also Active Directory, social networks, website, they are almost always there. Customer community, Salesforce Connect, something for document generation being it Conga or SDoc. Uh, electronic signature is basically everywhere. And yeah. This, this is something which might make your life easier because if you draw your system landscape and you are missing Salesforce Connect, I would double check how is that possible. Uh, data model, uh, another thing you need to, you need to draw. Uh, you need to be careful to go as much standard as possible. Don't invent custom objects, but just because you feel 
it's easier. Maybe the custom object you want to involve is exactly what opportunity what opportunity can do for you. You definitely need to mark your master detail relationship and lookup relationship. Uh, you should mark the large data volumes, and I would say be cautious here. Uh, the recommendation I got before the exam uh, was that maybe the jury or the judges uh, feel the large data volumes are a bit lower than you might expect. Uh, so if you read somewhere, as I did, that large data volumes is from 5 million records, uh, I heard that maybe they consider it less. But when you have just a few hundred thousand records, that's uh, probably not large data volume, and the judges might not like it. Uh, so also put the number of records here. I would say it's helpful. Definitely, you need to include the sharing uh, setting, private, uh, controlled by parent, and all these other things. <clears throat> find the body that's like if there is one thing i would super stress is find the body that's super helpful thing you can look at as a community you can post on twitter there are ladies be architect the saima group uh, salesforce architects in making uh, just recently i found this road to cta uh, salesforce saturday they are all things which are basically free. If you want to pay, uh, there's the Flow Republic, which uh, not just give you a body, but they have a learning management system full of good information or rather a way how to open your eyes. You don't really find these solutions there, but it will open your eyes to think you need to find more about and work on them it also provides you a list of questions you should think about and one-on-one -on -one coaching uh, which is probably the most uh, important part because you can train uh, with existing ctas and they will provide feedback about your presentation style to me the body was important to compare the notes and to compare our solutions because you can definitely uh, make different solutions for the same case study and it's uh, quite important or quite interesting to compare the notes and say why you did this way or why you did that way uh, the recommendation is also that they can help you accountable that's something i didn't really need it. Uh, what is important is that you should aim for the similar deadline because if you have different deadline, the speed will be different and it doesn't work. Compare the notes. This is probably the perfect example uh, I can come up with. As part of the Flow Republic training, uh, we should create a cheat sheets about a lot of different things. And I never knew what to put into those cheat sheets. So this is my part of my cheat sheet about object, standard object, custom object, big, big object, and all these other things. Basically, it was one page of things I found important. But then I compared my cheat sheets with John Furman's cheat sheet. And I think he created a small book about 40 pages about the objects. And it was one of the best discussion I ever had. Like we went through all the, the notes he put together and I put together and we reminded each other what we are missing. And we found quite a few things missing in each of our cheat sheets. So that's the important part about comparing them. If you do it just yourself and you put it into your drawer, um, you might be missing a lot. Just before the exam, I've been booked for the CTA 602, which is the final, which can be taken as a final check before the exam. 
I'm frankly not sure it's it's worth it. Uh, it's if it's the only way or only thing you have, it's uh, it's a good feedback, but it's not real. You have just one hour preparation time while in the exam you have three hours. Uh, obviously, this scenario is way shorter, but at the same time the the pressure is way way bigger than during the real exam. Um, I had a lot of a lot of presentations with my buddies and one on one, so I didn't really probably need it. It was definitely a nice experience, but I wouldn't repeat it. And then you have the exam. The day of the exam, before you should get some rest. Uh, what's important about the preparation as well is don't burn yourself. Uh, I had a few people who studied really hard and they burned themselves before the exam and they just wasn't able to get together. So get some rest during your studies and before the exam, because it will be a long day. You have three hours preparation time when you go through the scenario and you prepare all the slides and all the solutions. Then you have, you have 15 minutes break during the preparation time and you have 15 minutes break after that. Then you have 45 minutes for the presentation another 15 minutes break and 40 minutes Q&A. If you are non a native speaker, you can get extension. And I think you get extra 35 minutes for the preparation. Uh, you have no extra time for the presentation and you have extra 20 minutes for the Q&A. I was too proud or too stupid not to ask for the extension. Uh, nowadays, I would say it definitely helpful and I would ask for that um, because it will make you probably safer. But at the same time, my feeling was that the client will not give me extra 20% of his time just because I'm not native speaker. So that was my reasoning why I don't want it. The preparation, uh, <laughs> if you did a lot of the mock exams, it's just another mock. It's longer, it's like 10 pages. So it's quite long, quite a lot of reading. At the moment, there are no in-person uh, exams. It's all virtual going through WebEx. So the WebEx machine has a small like, so if you, if you are used to drawing a PowerPoint, you need to get used to the lag of like one second. Uh, the same is when you write on keyboard, you basically write and it will appear a few seconds later. So it might be a bit annoying, but that's something you can definitely train for and you should train for. If you draw the artifacts by hand, you have a time to upload the things at the end. So uh, you get extra minutes, which are not measured uh, to take a photo of your artifacts, uh, send them to the proctor. They will put them in the presentation and basically you get extra time to me the whole exam was less stressful than the web accessor exams on the web accessor it's always like put your glasses down where are you looking why are you speaking uh, show me your room and all these kind of things uh, i had no interruption during the cta preparation and q a and everything it was just sitting in front of a computer and doing my job with uh, no interruption. Check every single requirement. I said it at the beginning, I say it again. That's one of the biggest mistake you might do that you don't check every single requirement. You might feel the requirement is out of your scope because it's some other system doing something but at the same time, you need to cover that requirement. It's nice that the CIO has some hobby, but because it's mentioned in the, in the case study, you should say how you will deal with his hobby. No the licenses. Uh, in my life, I never really cared about licenses. Um, that's the account executive thing, I feel, but 
the exam is uh, super focused about the licenses because uh, wrongly chosen licenses will limit your possibilities. If you choose too expensive licenses, it's not good as well. Uh, so you need to find the right balance. Uh, you need to know the limits of the licenses. How many objects, how many files, uh, how many custom objects and all these kind of things, which you prefer to look up when they are important, but they are important or they might be important during the exam. I feel the exam is doesn't require to be a developer. You definitely need to have experience with presentation. You should be a bit more bit technical, but you don't need to have a development experience. But at the same time, you need to understand the different integration pattern. If there is requirement for real time integration, that's different than near real time or batch integration. And it looks obvious, but if there is really mention that it should be real time, it doesn't mean future Apex method. Future Apex method is near real time. Platform event is near real time. And all these kind of things are breaking changes in your solution. You get a Word document with the scenario. And my approach was to, for each requirement, to write the solution into the document. The more you write, the better, probably. But at the same time, it doesn't matter what you write into this scenario. It matters what you say. And you might highlight the things you really want to say uh, to speed up the process during the presentation. And I say write as much details as possible because you might forget something you wanted to say just because of the time pressure during the presentation. During the preparation, I prepared a slide about the licenses, uh, about the role hierarchy, about the system landscape, data model, and I, ha I had a slide about the deployment. I missed slide about integration patterns, even though I prepared it on a paper. Uh, I didn't upload it into the presentation and it was one uh, minus point, uh, even though I, I passed the integration uh, section of the exam. My approach was that I had the scenario on screen. You can have just one screen, uh, can't have multiple screens. And I had a bunch of papers around me. So I had one paper for the system landscape, one paper for data model, integration patterns, actors, and all these kind of things. And as I went through the scenario, I put all the relevant things on that relevant paper, and then I draw the the artifacts, but I was sure that I'm I'm not missing something but because I made notes about the respective areas during reading the scenario. If you did a pre-sale presentation, it's just another presentation. But it's a super short time to cover everything. 45 minutes looks like a lot of time. But you need to speak quickly. So if you want to know how to speak quickly, uh, I would say, and I tried it, I watched David Liu videos um, two times the speed. And that was about what I did during the presentation. It was really super, super quick. It was the shortest 45 minutes I ever experienced. The timing is quite important. You really should cover the whole presentation during those 45 minutes. If you will not fit, it's kind of OK if you miss just like a minute or two. But if you can fit in, that's definitely a plus point because it looks like you know how to make the timing work. I got a recommendation that uh, I should present the scenario as a story rather than requirement by a requirement. So I spent quite a time at the beginning describing my system landscape and my data model, how it will be used. And then when I had the specific requirement, which I already kind of covered during the system landscape and data model presentation, I, I covered it super quickly. Uh, there are questions how to, how to 
introduce the requirements, whether you should say, okay, requirement one and requirement two. I prefer to paraphrase the requirement, just a few words uh, to be sure you are on the same on the same line as the judges. And then you need to provide the details how you solve it. Don't expect that saying the right works, the right keywords will be enough. I had the slide about the de deployment process, but I basically had those few boxes like development, uh, devint, Q&A, UAT, production, and I've been running out of time. I did not say what will be tested where and why each of the environments is important, and, and I missed that. Uh, you might feel that it's obvious that the Q&A is for testing by the testers, manual may be automatic, UAT is for the user acceptance testing, so the users will test whether it's okay. Uh, you should do the smoke test in productions. But unless you say it, you miss the whole chapter. So really, you need to say it. At the same time, you need to be short and concise, and you need to speak in quite a lot of details. So I uh, got it from the 602 uh, documents. If you feel that saying, I will create a sharing rule uh, to allow internal sales manager to access the fitness companies, there is not enough detail. You really need to say the whole long paragraph that your OQ defaults are private, so you need to create a criteria based sharing rules that you have plenty of them because there is 50 uh, criteria based sharing rules limit and all these kind of things. So again, if you, I said that 45 minutes was super quick, think about this one as well. You are not really able to cover the requirement with one sentence. Like I will do Apex call out to the external web services, no. You will do Apex callout with the future method in the request and reply pattern, and then you will do something. So it's quite a lot of talking. And then you have the Q&A. Some people might be scared that uh, the longer the Q&A, the worst, because at least my experience from school was that they always wanted to find something you don't know. The experience from CTA is that they want to find what you do know uh, and give you bonus points. At the same time, you need to be prepared to be challenged. So it's nice that you did, that you say it will be single org or that you will use before flow, but you really need to be ready to be challenged. Why single org? Why before flow? Why not process builder? Do you think that the solution is good user experience? Maybe it will be better to use a mobile app instead of just a web browser on your mobile phone. And you need to be able to answer the questions and again, provide enough details. If you start speaking about mobile application, you need to be able to say whether it's native or hybrid and what's the difference between those two. Uh, you need to be as quick as possible because in those 40 minutes you have for Q&A, you should cover at least 20 questions, I heard. The more the better because you can get more, more bonus points. You need to think and I would say you need to speak about the consequences and considerations because the judges might ask a question which will change your system model or your data system landscape or your data model. And with every change you do, you need to think about the consequences. Consequences to sharing, consequences to governance and other things. And I would say you need to speak loudly that you considered those changes as well. 
you did it. Like six hours later, you did the board. And you should enjoy your life because you can't change anything. Now you need to just wait a few days, maybe a few weeks to get the result. And you even get the, hey, you failed. And here are the areas for improvement. And you really get a list of required of uh, ideas to improve the next time. Uh, you might not agree with some of them. Uh, some of them might feel ge uh, quite generic. Each of them is relevant. And also, you get a list of things you did right. Uh, so pat yourself on your shoulder. Uh, you get something similar uh, when you pass, uh, but at that time you probably don't care that much. How much the whole fund costs? There are some money behind it. Uh, so every uh, course you take uh, costs something. So the 601 is, I think, 900 price list. 602 is 15, 1500. Uh, if you get uh, the crunching, you can get it for free from someone. You can get it, I think the price list at the moment from Flow Republic is around 5,000. The board exam is 6,000 euros. All those prices are without the taxes. But at the same time, you need to invest a lot of time. Again, John Furman did some talk with other CTAs and he found out that uh, the, the time they invest directly into the CTA preparation is something between 200 and 1500 hours. Besides the fact that they've been in the industry for five plus years. So if you look at it this way, uh, the time investment, the time investment is way more costly than the money investment. Um, recommendation, ask for discount. Maybe you will get some, maybe you will not, but uh, you shouldn't be lazy. It's easy to ask. And a few shortcuts and tips uh, which you should think about. And again, Johan said something like 80% of my presentation is the same all the time. So basically, in every single scenario, most likely you will have the ESB. And you should know what's the difference between ESB and EPL. You will have a Salesforce Connect, mobile publisher, and something like Okta Open. Uh, very, very often you have Salesforce Shield and you need to know what is the limit of Salesforce Shield. And you will have quite often the Einstein analytics as well, Tableau CRM nowadays. You need to know about third party applications. DocuSign is in about every single scenario or any other electronic signature. Conga, SDoc, or something for document generation as well. Uh, something for data archival because you want to mitigate the large data volumes problems with the data archival. And deleting the records is probably not the right way you should do it. You should probably archive the data first. From all the mock exams I did, uh, I had maybe two multi-org uh, scenarios. Everything else is single org. You still need to be prepared for the multi-org. You need to know when to choose it, uh, but um, maybe you don't have to put that much into it. It's being said that you need to present the OAuth flow during the CTA, and that's true. Uh, what's probably even harder uh, during the virtual experience is that at least, and I hope I can share this one, uh, I wasn't allowed to draw the OAuth flow, but I had to describe the OAuth flow from top of my head, and I consider it even harder because if you first can draw it on a paper or on a table, 
and then describe what's going on, it's definitely easier for me than start speaking from top of my head how it works. And I was really scared about the old flow. I was scared about the old flow when I did the identity exam. But now I put quite some time to study them. And I found they are pretty easy. And they are definitely not tricky because you feel there are like 10 different so outflow, but at the end they are really similar. The Samuel Beater to, uh, flow and J JWT uh, token flow is about the same. The username password is the same basically as well. Uh, so it's easy, just put, put your time to, to study them, to draw them, to be aware of what's being passed where, and, and it's easy. Definitely write enough, enough notes because otherwise during the presentation, you will skip something important and you need to say it. And the thing at the end or at the beginning, get your body. Uh, it, I would say it's super hard without the body because you have no one to check with about different opinions about different solutions, about things you are blind and you don't know about them. And if you can, if you are non-native speaker, get the extra time. It's, it's worth it. And with that, I'm crossing my fingers and maybe, who knows, once upon a time, you will pass the CTA and you will join all those people who can use this title and you will be well known in the community. Good luck. <laughs>